<laughs> Ito yung maganda dito sa show eh. There are light moments in this show. Pero hindi siya pilit. Hindi siya corny. <laughs> now as I'm watching the series unfold and talagang naamis ako doon sa talagang pinag-isipan ni Ong series kasi itong part na ito ito yung first instance ng ransomware attack and yung latter part gumamit sila dito ng iba't ibang methodology kung paano i-resolve o paano i-remediate yung ransomware attack in this first scene ng ransomware attack ang ginamit dito ni, Zo- ni Dosan gumo- ang pinerform na dito is yung tinatawag nating memory forensics So, he's performing what we call as memory forensics. And there are a lot of tools na ginagamit in reality. Yung mga, sa totoong buhay, yung mga nag analyze ng malware o yung nag-perform ng memory forensics, gumagamit ng mga tools yun. And yung tool na ginamit niya dito is actually used. So, it's pretty accurate yung depiction dito sa side na ito. And kung i-discuss natin siya, yung memory forensics, it plays a significant role sa investigation and sa incident response. And in general, there are two steps sa tinatawag nating memory forensics. The first one is called as acquisition. And the second one is called as analysis. Sa acquisition part, is ito yung part na kinukuha mo, hinuhugot mo yung content ng memory. Pwedeng sa physical machine or pwedeng sa virtual machine. Sa physical machine, you have tools, may mga ginagamit na tools such as dump it or pass dump but for virtual machine it's it's much easier all you have to do is pwede mong i-suspend yung virtual machine and then just grab a copy of the BMEM file. Yung BMEM file or virtual memory it's a file extension used by software virtualization such as VMware and yung virtual box. Now, pag-usapan na natin ito. I-discuss natin yung statement na dito. So, sabi niya dito, I might be able to find the prime key in the memory. And somewhat, that is accurate. Itong tool na ito, so he's using what we call as volatility. This volatility tool, meron siyang plug-in. Bagaman, yung, kung pag-uusapan natin, yung talagang malware na ginamit dito is not a ransomware. Yung binabanggit ko na tool, may plug-in siya called as Trocrip wherein pwede mong kunin, pwede mong i-retrieve from the memory yung master key. TrueCrypt is used for full description. And as a requirement, the key must be stored in the memory for transparency, for TrueCrypt encryption. So, this is somewhat true na pwede mong makuha from the memory yung tinatawag nating prime key or master key. And there's a plug-in for that one. But sa ransomware, since hindi naman yung ransomware yung ginagamit na dito, I'm not yet sure, baka may alam kayo, but there's a plug-in in volatility na pwedeng makuha yung AES master key. Okay? Ayan. So, kung napansin nyo dito, that's ball.exe. So, itong ball.exe, then dash F na syntax na ito, this, kumbaga, ito yung magpapas- magsasabi sa atin na he's using the Windows executable, the standalone Windows executable of volatility. And kung pag-uusapan natin na banggit ko kanina ang mal- ang, poren- ang memory forensics is either acquisition yung first step and then the second one once you have the memory image you will now perform what we call as analysis or memory analysis. Ito yung part na yung dump is i-analyze mo for forensic artifacts. At 
sa workflow ng analysis, merong in general, iba-iba ng style eh. But in general, there are six common steps sa workflow if you are performing what we call as memory forensics. The first one is, yung, the first step is called as, ito yung part na ina-identify mo yung mga running processes. So the first one is identification of running processes dun sa system o doon sa na copy mo na memory image. And then the second one is yung ay inspection o ito yung part na ina-analyze mo na yung mga process DLLs and handles. So the first one is identification of running processes. The second one is analyzing of process DLLs and handles. Yung third one is ito yung part na you're reviewing network artifacts. At ang maganda dito, yung first three steps is yun yung ginawa dito ni Dawson. Then, yung fourth one is you're looking for evidence of code injection. So, yun yung fourth step. And then, the fifth one is you're checking for, for signs of root kits doon sa system. And finally, is yung dumping or idadump mo na yung malicious process for further malware analysis. So, yun yung anim na steps under memory analysis. At ang maganda doon, pinakita dito yung unang tatlong process na yon o yung unang tatlong steps na yon Kaya, ma, na, mas, na, masaya talaga na, na kumbaga, masaya ako na nakita ko siya as a security professional. Okay. So, let's go back to this one. Okay. It, you notice, yung binagit ko sa inyo kanina, so, he is using a BMEM file. So, ang ginagamit niya dito is a virtual memory. So, this image here comes from a virtual machine, hindi physical machine. And if you have now a copy of the memory image, yung unang-una mong gagawin, o kumbaga ito yung step 0 sa, sa analysis. Kasi yung step 1 is identification ng mga process. Eh. Ito yung step 0. You execute what we call as image info. Or gagamitin mo yung plugin called as image info. Yung image info will give you yung mga informations about the image. Ito ba, ito, kumbaga, ito yung profiling ng image. It will give you the profile of the image. Now, pakita natin, I have a copy of the actual tool and image na ginamit ni Dosan. So, kung ipapakita natin siya, for, ito yung first one, okay. Execute natin yung pinatawag nating image info. So, ito yung magiging output ng image info once in-execute mo ito sa isang BM file. Medyo matagal mag-load ng kaunti. So, habang binabasa niyo yung content noong habang ina-analyze niyo yung memory image natin. So, this one is the output of a image info plug-in. And in this case, ang mahalaga sa atin dito for now is this one. So, the profile suggested profiles here are dalawa, but hindi ko na i-detail. But for, for the meantime, so we'll use this kasi ito yung ginamit doon sa mismong show eh. So, we'll use the Windows XP Service Pack 2. So, ito yun. Let's copy this one. Now, after this, we could again, pakita natin ang sinunod niya na execution. Pakita natin yung So, let's go back. Ayan. Ito yung nagta-type siya uli ng panibagong command dito, but actually, kung napansin nyo, sa bandang taas, may na-execute na siyang command eh. After listing yung profile, pa after mo ma-execute yung image info, sabi natin, yung, yun yung step 0, na you are getting the information of the memory image. Yung step 1 is identification na ng mga running process, including their parent processes. And ang pwede mo gamitin na plug-in for this one is yung tinatawag dating PS3. At ito yung output nun. Kung nakikita nyo dito, medyo blurred ng kaunti, this part here is, ayan yung output ng step 1. So, hindi na ipinakita, but that's the output of the step 1. Kung i-execute natin siya, so, I think I have a copy here noong execution. So, for the meantime, so, PS3 yung gamitin natin. Ito yung output ng PS3. 
So if you notice, this is the actual image na ginagamit ni Dosan. At yung process doon is the payment process is this one. At ito yung malicious process. Ito yung rogue process. Yung reader's executable. So the main process is this one. Medyo blurred lang dito. This is explorer.exe. And this is the malicious process. And then, mag execute siya ulit ng bagong command. Pakita natin. Itong part na ito, he's viewing the disassembled code. Mamaya pag-usapan natin siya sa second instance. And ito talaga yung tunay. It will take time. Hindi yung a few seconds lang kung ano-ano yung mga tinatype mo. Hindi yun yung actual remediation steps. It will take time. Yung totoong proseso. Ayan, pakita natin ito. Itong part na ito, if you notice dito sa display, before executing yung command na tinatype niya, mayroon naka-display na dito. So, may naka-display dito. And this is the output. This output this is the output of another plugin. Sabi natin kanina, yung step 1 is nililista mo yung mga running processes. But there are processes na hidden or yung iba nagtatago intentionally such as yung mga malicious executable nga. Kaya after mong ilis yung mga process, yung pwedeng yung sub procedure is ilis mo naman next na i-execute mo is yung tinatawag nating PSX view to check yung mga hidden processes. At itong output na ito, itong display na ito is the output of that plugin. Pakita natin. So, let's type PSX view. Okay? So, ito yung output nun. Yung nakikita nyo dito sa screen, itong nasa screen dito na may mga true, 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 itong mga to, and then yung iba't ibang klase ng executable here. Ito yon. This is the output. Because we're using the same image, so same lang po yung output nito at yun nandun sa screen. And finally, ayan. This is, I think, the last command or plugin na in-execute doon sa clip. Yung sockets command. At lumalabas, nasa step 3 na ito eh. Doon sa step 3, sabi natin, ito na yung sa you are reviewing network artifacts. Yung sockets plugin ang output nito, it will give you yung mga running sockets at yung mga open connections. If we will execute that, hindi na ipinakita dito sa palabas. Pag in-execute natin yon, ito ang magiging output niya. Ayan. So, this output here shows yung mga running sockets at yung mga open connections. Yan yung, yan yung third step. But this one, medyo yung clip is nag-ship na dun sa part na nakuha niya na yung prime key at natanggal niya ni ransomware. 